I get so much utter rubbish in the comments section from those who obviously do not own or ever want an EV. This is the end of EVs. It's only leases that are keeping EVs alive. They're not really sales. Nobody wants them. Nobody will ever buy Chinese. 50% of all EV owners cannot charge at home. 80% of all EV owners want to go back to petrol cars. We've heard them all. So let's forget the rest of the world for the moment. Let's have a look at what's happening back here in the UK. And let's have a look at some hard facts. Now, there are two ultra reliable resources for EV data that the government uses. That's the SMMT and ZapMap. The Society for Manufacturers and Motor Traders is a trade body that gets all the current data, collates it for the industry and for the government. ZapMap monitors and tracks absolutely everything that's going on, and it's also one of the primary data sources for the UK government. Just check gov.uk and actually cite ZapMap as a primary source. Nothing made up, nothing exaggerated, not what I think. This is the hard data. Let's go. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Okay, SMMT, new car sales for November 2024. Diesel sales, 9,434, which is 10% down on November 2023. Market shares now just 6% and falling. Petrol sales, 70,317, down 17.7% from 2023. Market share now down below 50%, 45.8%. It's fallen from 54.6 last year. BEV, that's 100% battery electric vehicles, 38,581, up 58.4% from November uh, 2023. Market share now 25.1%, up from 15.6 last year. PHEV plug-in hybrids, 15,687, down 1.2% from last year, and now market share 10.2%. HEV, hybrid, petrol and battery, but cannot charge from a plug, 19,591, down 3.6% uh, from 2023. Market shares now 12.8%, down from 13% last year. Summary, petrol's down, diesel's down, PHEV down, HEV down, BEV up 58.4%. That says pretty much everything. But that's a single month, so what's happening year to date? What's that looking like? Okay, diesel again, 116,044. That's down 12.6% on last year. Petrol, 959,673, down 3.2%. BV, 338,314, up 17.9%. PHEV, 154,462, up 19.6%. HEV, 243,499 up 9.6%. Summary, fossil fuel only, down 4%. Battery and hybrids, anything with electric, up 15%. Total sale, all fuels, 1,811,992, 1, it's up 2.8%. So, the November marketing split, private sales, 58,496, that's down 3.3%. It's a market share of 38.1%. So fleet sales, 91,993, that's down 1.1%, 59.9% share. Business sales, 3,121, that's up a 5.2%. So total, 153,610, down 1.9%. Year-to-date marketing split, private sales, 701,964, it's down 9.1%, fleet, 1,071,049, um, that's up 12.9%. Business, 38,997, down 4.2. So the best-selling cars, November this year, Mini Cooper, 4,412, Nissan Qashqai, 3,776, third Tesla Model Y, 3,350. Best-selling year to date, Ford Puma, 45,000, Kia Sportage, 45, Nissan Qashqai, 40,000, Best EV, Tesla Model Y, 28,000. Okay, now switching sources, we're going to ZapMap, key findings for November 2024. ZapMap carry out regular surveys, produce publicly available data reports, and this was a BV survey, not hybrids, not ICE, 100% BV, and they went out to 7,500 actual owners of a BEV. 
3,746 replied, and this is what the report states. 87% were male, 13% were female. The mode age was 65 to 74, median was 55 to 64. 80% of 86% of those used public network. Most of the survey donors live in the home counties. Second place best is Cornwall, then East Anglia. The least number uh, live in Northern Ireland. 87% had an average or above satisfaction, and 83% they would recommend them to a friend or family. 78% state their EV is more cost effective than ICE, 73% credit them with being better for the environment, and 65% state a better performance. Less than 3% want to switch back to ICE. In the home, 44% had dual fuel cars, a, a petrol or two, and an EV or two, while 56% have only electric vehicles. This has increased from last year, which was a 50-50 split. 88% used BEV instead of ICE or PHEV for local activities. 79% say they have a home charger other than a three-pin plug. 51% of owners use public charging at least once a month. 48% use ch public charging less than once a month. The mode figure is less than once a month. The median is around once a week. 53% used grid serve in the last six months, 45 Instavolt, 41 BP Pulse, 30% Ionity, 27% Podpoint, 25% Tesla, 24% Osprey and Geniepoint, 18% uh, Shell Recharge and MFG Power, 15%. 55% of EV drivers have used a motorway services to charge their EV, 52% have used a hub, 30% used a supermarket, 28% used a car park, 22% a retail park and or a hotel, 18% used a petrol forecourt, 17% was a restaurant or pub. Of all public charging sessions, 64% were rated average, 67% of those said it was getting better, 33% said it stayed the same, 7% said it was worse. Of the CPOs, these are the charge point operators or public charging networks, with over 300 rapid and ultra rapid chargers, Tesla was rated top 4.5 stars, MFG 4 stars, uh, Osprey BEV and GridServe Instavolt all 3.5 stars, Shell Recharge and Charge Place Scotland 2.5 stars, BP Pulse, Genie Point 2 stars. In general, one new charger was added every 23 minutes in the first half of this year. Ultra rapid chargers have doubled in the last year and overall there was a 40% growth in UK charge points. This survey covered 95% of all UK charge points. Usage has increased 35% year on year and a total of around 30 gigawatts is transferred by public chargers every month. I assume that's 30 gigawatt hours. Zapmap sales report, uh, there are 1.25 million EVs on the road at almost 4% of all the cars. In 2024 to date, EV sales reached 17.8% of the market. It's expected to reach very nearly 20% by year end. The biggest sales recorded in March and September, that's a change of the number plate, and November was the best month in 2024 other than those. And it's up on November last year by nearly 50%. At the end of November, there were 2,083,175 plug-in cars, with 1.3 million of them pure EVs, 740,000 plug-in hybrids. The gap is widening. In 2020, 47% were BEVs, 2024, 64%. In November, BEVs sold nearly 40,000 to PHEV, 12,000. Market share, BEV, 19%, PHEV, 8%. So 50,000 used BVs were sold, that's uh, 2.7%, that's being a 57% increase. 70,000 vans are now BVs, 1.5% of all vans, and growth is steady. Charging, 36,316 locations with 72,594 devices, 106,094 connectors or plugs, and 1,135 were added last month. In 2024, the biggest growth of charges were those less than 8 kilowatts, and the number of ultra-rapid chargers more than doubled. The largest number of chargers, shown as 8,018 by Shell Recharge, 
but the top nine are mainly fast chargers at or below 50 kilowatts. Of the rapid and ultra rapid, Instavolt is shown as 1805 Tesla, 1744. But note, Instavolt is mainly fast chargers around 50 kilowatts. Tesla are all ultra rapids. Okay, rapid ultra rapid represent 5,821 locations, 14,098 devices, and 25,361 connectors or plugs. That's gone up 152 from last month. The majority of changes 2020 were fast, the charges were fast, being less than 50 kilowatts. In 2024, the number of rapid and ultra rapid is rapidly approaching the same as fast. 2021, the majority charges were fast or less than 150. 2024, the majority by far are now over 150 and growing rapidly. And the number of fast and below 150 kilowatt installations dropped dramatically. Rapid ultra rapid only networks being 50 kilowatts and above. Intervolt top 1805, but most of 50 kilowatt. Tesla 1744, followed by BP Pulse, GridServe, MFG, Genie Point, Shell Recharge although I doubt some of the figures coming from the oil giants. Well, rapid ultra rapid network, market share, Intervolt 12.7%, Tesla 12.4%, BP Pulse 9.8%, Osprey 8.6%, GridServe 6.1%, Motor MFG, Motor for Fuel Group 5.5%. Uh, the area with the greatest number of rapid or rapid charges is the southeast, followed by Scotland, then the northwest. The worst is Wales, northeast and Northern Ireland. Wales and the northeast each have around one third of the northwest. Charging hubs have doubled in the last year and now stand at over 500. Charging prices now average 57p for slow and fast, up to 50 kilowatts, 80p for 50 kilowatts and above. But note that this only covers 70% of the total charging network as it's based on the arrive and charge price, the top price. Most of the dearer ones offer significant discounts of some sort. Even Instavolt, uh, they charge 85p peak. 54p off peak, others offer memberships and other deals. Prices are almost totally flat over the last 12 months. Well, like with utility tariffs, where they all quote an average house for comparison, Zapmap quotes three scenarios. John and Rosa charge mostly at home, Michael and Marie often charge at home, and Chris cannot charge at home. So John and Rosa will pay an average £660 per year. Michael and Marie, 1,130, and Chris, 1,830 a year. An average ice driver will pay 1,430. That equates to 7p a mile, 11p, 18p, and 14p, respectively, based on 10,000 miles a year. Chris, who cannot charge at home, pays more than ice, but saves on car tax, servicing, and maintenance. Well, the growth continues, and I hope that all the deniers have run out of excuses for yet another massive growth. Well, it's only leases, propping up the market, massive discounting. It's all to avoid penalties for the EV mandate, etc, 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 etc. Why do they bother? Looking at new EV sales, first, a leased vehicle is a sale. The manufacturer sells the EV to the leasing company or to its own leasing company if it offers its own financing. That's a sale from a manufacturer to a seller, or to a user. The leasing company leases it then to the driver, which in most cases is a private individual, an employee. At the end of the lease, the leasing company usually sells it off into the trade or at auction. Now, about 30% of all sales are now leases. That's ICE and EVs. So if you don't like leases, that's your ICE cars as well. They're very popular for companies as the employee pays the lease, not the company. These are salary sacrifice. The employee typically pays about 50% of the price of a private PCH lease for exactly the same car. There are also savings on national insurance, which the employer can and often does pass on to the employee. And this is typically worth around over £100 a month. If you need a car and your company offers a salary sacrifice scheme, you'd be mad not to at least consider it. A brand new car, brand new EV, for half the price of anything you can do yourself. It's a no-brainer. In many companies, there's absolutely no choice. We do salary sacrifice. Here's a list of cars we offer. If you don't choose one, you don't get a car. That's it. Now, in addition, with salary sacrifice, the vehicle excise duty or road tax is free. 
Yeah, I know, free this year until April, you'll tell me, but all leases include the cost of the VED for the duration of the lease. So after 2025, the driver will still not be required to pay the vehicle excise duty. Now, in some cases, the lease also includes servicing, if any, and insurance. This is a total package. The driver pays the single monthly premium. Everything is included. And even in some cases, we've released videos on this, uh, the employer offers free workplace charging for employees. Hence the popularity of salary sacrifice deals, both for ICE, but also at half price for EVs. The EV market is healthy. It is not growing at the pace many legacy auto hoped for or predicted it would, but most legacy, legacy auto has done sweet FA in any serious sense. They've got what they deserve. Ice car sales around the world are seriously shrinking, although with recent price rises and the scrapping of basic models in favour of top of the range. Luxury models are seriously overinflated high prices. Profits for some of the legacy companies are see, uh, seem to be holding up. Others seem to be entering a terminal decline now that China no longer buys Western cars at all, either ICE or EVs. Those fully dedicated to EVs, for example, BYD, seeing massive growth in an overall car market that is shrinking. Tesla's also seen a significant drop in sales earlier in the year, but sales now are booming. And Tesla is projecting a record final quarter 2024, and the full year they're projecting is likely to be better than 2023. Profits are down year on year, but they're still considerably above average in the whole of the auto world. Well, quick summary, BV sales are up 58.4% in November, 17.9% year to date versus last year. Market share, 25.1% November, 17.9% for the year. In November, one in four new car sales was an EV. Over the whole year, one in five. 79% of all EV owners can and do charge at home on a cheap rate tariff and less than half charge at a public charger every month. Please, can I save all of you EV deniers the effort? If you disagree with these figures because you believe they're wrong or because you've heard that Tesla's going bust or because sales in Germany or Timbuktu have crashed or nobody in the right mind will ever buy Chinese or, or, or the most pathetic is if the very best you can possibly think up is something about a milk float. Please don't bother. Please contact the relevant automaker or the data producer or the government, not this channel. The UK government uses these figures. Dave takes it on, uses real world data. Your opinion is just that, your opinion. And if it differs from the official figures, you're just plain wrong. Get over it. I'm Dave.